Greetings Patriots, welcome back to the State of the Nation talk with your host Danny Torres. Our broadcast will be streaming shortly. Sit back, buckle in and enjoy the ride as always, remember to keep your powder dry. <laughs> the moment you have all been waiting for. Welcome to the State of the Nation broadcast with your host, the digital watchman, Danny Torres. Good evening, Patriots. So good to see each and every one of you. Thank you all for taking a few moments out of your busy life to be with us um, and to learn some uh, information, some news uh, that's happening that you won't hear uh, anywhere else. And uh, we just are really uh, happy to be with you. A um, couple things. First, we want to say that uh, your host, myself, Danny Torres, the Digital Watchman, does not approve of and does not endorse any violence against any person or governmental building, structure, or organization. We thank you once again for participating in your freedom of speech and your freedom of choice. This is America. We believe in we the people. Um, tonight we got some good stuff. I got some good videos planned for us tonight. Um, the show's not going to be as long as it normally is, and uh, it's, we just got some things we got to get done. I got a little bit of time. I got uh, I got to crush some things together because I got another meeting I got to make. But um, I, I would want to tell you that uh, don't be disheartened by what you're seeing on the news about the impeachment process. I know it's a little tough, you know, to hear and see, and I don't recommend you watch it. Um, but, you know, make your own decisions and choices. Um, 
a little bit of uh, housekeeping. Uh, if you will continue to hit the like button and continue to share um, this program, the more you share it, the more you like it, um, what happens is we beat the uh, algorithms that um, Facebook puts on us and suppresses us down. So this helps us get the product out, get it to people. The more uh, impressions that we show on the system, like the likes or the loves or whatever we do, they have to switch us from server to server, which stops them from suppressing us on one server. So that's just a little trick we've learned. And so if you want to continue to see um, a stream, uh, a full stream without it freezing up, that helps us do it. As always, we're going to start with a little bit from the scripture, and we're going to be talking about Matthew 5.48. And in Matthew 5.48, we understand that Jesus Christ shows us how we should live. He explains that he is the light and uh, that he is an example for us. And uh, one of the best ways that um, we as Christians can be for our neighbors is to be Christ-like. And we need to remember to emulate these Christ-like attributes in our everyday life. That's um, no matter where we're at, whether we're at home, in front of our family, or we're at school, in front of our friends, or we're at the grocery store, in front of our neighbors, we need to remember to be Christ-like. We also need to remember that Christ-like attributes is an effective disciple-maker process. So if you want to be a disciple-maker, if you want to follow after Christ's example to be a disciple-maker, you must emulate Christ as a disciple-maker. Um, if we are faithful, Jesus Christ will continue to magnify our talents and abilities and help us to become more like him. And uh, my prayer for you today is that you reflect the light and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and be an encourager. Be the salt and the light for your world. Thank you so much. Okay, um, we're going to continue now with uh, a couple things. I'm, I want to start a little bit with the Arizona um, recount issue. We kind of talked about this last time. I'm going to show you a photo here. So, this is Senator Paul Boyer. A senator, uh, he's a state senator in Arizona, and um, he uh, he is the Republican who, right up until the very last minute, he decided he was going to change his vote, and he changed his vote, which made it an even count. So if you live in Arizona, and if you live in his district, I will tell you that today I have seen there is a, a, a petition circulating to recall him. So um, there is active recall on Senator Boyer. And I highly recommend that you get involved and you send this senator a message that he not only harmed the people of Arizona, but he also harmed the people of the United States. Because this was an opportunity. Now, we're still going to get the opportunity. But this was a, qu a quick opportunity, a better opportunity for um, precincts across the nation to see that they could hold 
these um, voter chiefs or these voter uh, council people um, in contempt if they refuse to show the legislator um, the uh, actual ballots and so on and so forth. So, you know, the, the board of uh, supervisors uh, of the voting constituency for Georgia is holding the ballots hostage from the legislator, which is totally unconstitutional. And um, they're trying to get this released so they can do a forensic audit. Now, once they complete that forensic audit, they're going to find out, you know, exactly the who, what, why, and how the process was either valid or not valid. Here's my train of thought. And this is just my opinion. If there's nothing wrong with the process, why wouldn't you release the vote? Why wouldn't you release the ballot? Because if you've done everything you're supposed to do and you don't think that you're in the wrong, release the ballot. The problem is these people understand, these um, supervisors, board of supervisors understand, they certified a product and if that product's not right, they can be held up to 10 years um, imprisonment and fine because they lied and their actions are showing that they're afraid they didn't do something right I mean you know it is what it is you can make that decision anyway you've seen his picture that's the guy and uh, you know I believe um, it's not over and uh, that's going to be fixed. And the same kind of thing is going on down in Georgia. There is still some uh, law students that are lawsuits that are pending and going through the system. Now, the big one is the lawsuit uh, that's there's going to be three suits heard at the Supreme Court on the 19th, which is next week. Now. I'm not going to say they're going to be heard. They're going to be reviewed. And the Supreme Court's going to make a decision whether to hear them or not. Um, this could be a big deal. Could be a really big deal. And uh, that's kind of kind of what we're hoping for. We're kind of hoping to move forward with that process. All right. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to go to my first video. And uh, I'll share this with you. Remember, continue to hit the like, continue to share, uh, uh, and uh, that'll help um, get the system rolling so you can watch without this freezing up. Uh, the Senate voting earlier, just before we started the show, 56 to 44, six Republicans said yes, impeaching a civilian, somebody who's not in elected office is constitutional. My next guest, Arizona Congressman Andy Biggs attended today's first day of, uh, of trial, really. Congressman, uh, welcome to the Chris Salcedo Show, glad to have you back. Give us your interpretation of day one of this, air quotes, impeachment. Well, Chris, I think it kind of went like we thought it would, um, where you've got going on this this notion of what's the jurisdiction. But the Democrats, of course, what they're focusing on is the emotion of the event. They're not focusing on 
uh, what President Trump actually said. So if you're focusing on what President Trump actually said the day of, um, if you focus on the fact that we've had all kinds of evidence that have come out in the interim that says this was actually a pre-organized, um, coordinated attack on the uh, on the uh, the Capitol itself, on the facts, President Trump would win it. On the process, uh, they denied uh, and didn't bother to mention how they warped the process in the House and how they're trying to actually warp it in the Senate with their jurisdictional uh, claims. So that kind of went the way we thought it would. And ultimately, the president would win on the facts, the process, but also on the Constitution. And I think that 56, 56 people voted, including six Republicans, to say it was constitutional, absolutely makes a mockery of the Constitution and puts everybody, everybody who's an elected official, uh, but particularly a president of the United States, will be in jeopardy um, when they leave office. And that means, quite frankly, that you've got Hillary Clinton's now available to go after, uh, Obama's available to go after. All of them are available to go after now. Yeah, well, no, I, I concur. And, of course, that's going to do wonderful things for unity in this country. By the way, the names of those Republicans, Mitt Romney, Bill Cassidy, Ben Sass, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, Pat Toomey. And, you know, Pat Toomey is going to be leaving office. Maybe we can go after him for something. Goodness knows they open the floodgates for that, for political retribution. It's really the, the, the lasting effects, the cancerous effects of what they've done today. We're going to be long-lasting. Long Let me pivot to something that I believe the reason why we're having to go through this whole exercise is because the Biden administration is really just out there, Congressman, doing a whole bunch of anti-American garbage policies. For example, they are going to cram through without any Republican support $1.9 trillion spending bill, laughingly calling it a China virus relief package. But really what it is is a poor liberal state governance bailout package. And inside they're going to have a $15 an hour minimum wage. And that is, according to the CBO, going to kill 1.4 million jobs. Is it too early to call Mr. Biden an anti-jobs occupier of the Oval Office? No, I think you're right on the money. I think that part of this is exactly what you're saying. It's a distraction to the radical move to the left that the Biden administration is imposing upon America today. So, you... all, all right. right. So, so I hope hopefully you, you got, got the gist of, of what, what was going, going on. Um, I, I understand, understand their the shadow, shadow banning us. That, that means they're, they're trying, trying to cut, cut us, us in and out, out you, you know, know, with... Uh, uh, um, with the, you know, with the, with the uh, video processing. So our problem with that is, you know, we just have to get past it. And uh, I apologize. I'm still trying to work on another format where uh, we can just work straight off a, a different format and we can share it on Facebook, but we don't have to worry about relying on Facebook to be our primary workhorse. So that's one thing um, that I'm working on right now. And it's, I'm finding out it's not as easy as I thought it was. There's a lot of stuff involved and, and it, it consumes a lot of time. So I hope you got the gist of what they were saying. I got another video here I wanna share. And uh, let me see here, I'm going to try to get it going. All right, here we go. The U.S. Senate voted 56 to 44 that they could impeach a private citizen, a former president of the United States. Of course, in this case, it's Donald Trump. There were a lot of senators who believe this was unconstitutional. We still believe it is unconstitutional. We had this prohibition against passing bill of attainers against private citizens in Article 1 of our Constitution. But now the U.S. Senate is trying a private citizen because they are a former president. Now, former presidents are still subject to the law. If they did something illegal, even while they were in office, especially once they're out of office, they're subject to normal criminal law. If there was insurrection, sedition, 
all this that, that President Trump is being accused of, a regular prosecutor could bring those charges against him. They haven't been. He's not been arrested for, for these crimes. The rioters, the people who committed crimes on January 6th, rightfully have been arrested. They did commit crimes. They did something wrong. Even after the Senate voted that they had the constitutional authority to carry on with this trial, that the Chief Justice isn't there. It says clearly that the Chief Justice shall preside. He has no choice in the impeachment trial of a president. It doesn't say he shall preside over the impeachment trial of a former president. The Democrats, they can't force him to be there. He doesn't have to be there. And he's not there. So that's another reason why this is an impeachment sham. If you can impeach former officials, including the President of the United States, can we impeach President Obama for Fast and Furious? Can we impeach President Obama for the targeting of conservatives by the IRS? Can we impeach President Obama for Benghazi? How do you draw a line? I don't think you can. I think it's really going to be up to the U.S. Senate to say, we'll never do this again. And that is why we believe still at the Americans are for Law and Justice, this entire impeachment hoax, this second impeachment, if you will, is no impeachment at all. Because who is on trial? It's not the president, as the Constitution says. It's a U.S. citizen, not subject to the jurisdiction of the United States Senate. We've got a petition up at 8... So... so. I think, I think you kind of got, got the, the gist of what was going on there. Um, the president, Donald Trump, is the former president, Donald Trump. He is not the president unless he is. Unless they know something we don't know. Um, the bottom line is uh, he's a citizen and the Constitution does not allow you to uh, impeach a citizen and you heard the the train of thought which we talked about before we talked about if this is allowed as soon as the uh, Republican Party gets um, control of the House and gets control of the Senate then we can bring President Obama back we can bring um, Hillary in, we can bring Pence in, we could bring anybody in and impeach them for something they did while they were in office. And um, believe me, those three names I just named you have done a whole lot more than what Donald Trump's done while he's been in office. So don't be fooled. Um, something's amiss here. And, and uh, what we're watching is a really big, um, a really big sideshow. And uh, it appears that they are hitting this hard right now. They're, uh, they're really trying to stop us uh, as far as Facebook, their shadow banning us. And, you know, it's terrible, but it's okay. It's okay. They're showing that they don't want to hear the truth. That's all that's going on is they're showing they don't want to hear the truth. And we, the people, we're not going to put up with it. You know what I mean? We're just not going to put up with this anymore. We're not going to allow, um, you know, the, the liberals to run uh, just total you know, to run over us. We're not going to allow them to take the, every opportunity they can and try to force their agenda on the American people. And that's exactly what is happening right now, guys. They are forcing their uh, agenda on the American people. And it's got to stop. It's got to stop. Because if it doesn't stop, we are going to lose our nation. We're going to lose our republic. So it's up to you. Now, remember, we talked about this before. You start from ground roots up. All right. If there's a dog catcher that needs to be voted in in your neighborhood, Pick the best dog catcher. If there's not a good choice, 
be the choice. And it just works. It's all the way up. We talked about there being um, 200, uh, 200 openings, 200,000 openings in, in the um, uh, process right now uh, for uh, the Republican Party. Go find your local chapter of the Republican Party and volunteer to be a, a representative. Volunteer. And what you're going to find is we can affect the change inside out. And we can force these globalists out of the Republican Party by taking over the party. There's no reason we should have to go start another party. This is our party. This We are the party of Lincoln. This is our party. And we need to remember that. Now, um, I got another video I want to show you. I don't know if you guys have seen this video. Um, it's a really good video. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start it here. Let me get going here and get it, get it all set up. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Revival in the Hebrides. In the early... 1900s began to move moved up to the pleading for it in the 40s maybe we could say it topped out in the early 50s two old women one was 84 years old and one was 82 years old one was blind and one was humped over so badly with signs of notice just, just marched over but they had passion for revival. They wanted God to work. This, this is what happened. They couldn't even get out to the church to pray. They couldn't even get out to the church to worship. Their house became a place to meet. People came in. They got so passionate about revival coming to the, their isle, the Isle of Lewis. They got so passionate about it. They confronted the preacher and wanted to know if he was thoroughly right with God. <laughs> And they prayed and prayed and prayed. And they'd seen the Lord, they said, with the church filled up and God blessing and a great overflow. And the fire of God struck that tiny little obscure place off the coast of Scotland. And when it happened, there was a young teenage boy that got saved in it. His name was Donald, and the preacher became so dependent upon Donald and so close to Donald, he would ask him to lead in public prayers and help him with the meetings, and he did. Oh, how God worked. People began to hear about it, and the revival fire spread. It spread. And God blessed in a, in a great way. Those two old women, the people, kind of people, people don't want in their church anymore. And from that same island, there was a, a young girl who was a cousin to Donald Smith, who immigrated to America. Her name was Marianne Smith McLeod. She came to America and in 1936. She met a man named Fred, and they were married. They fell in love. They were married. God bless in a great way. And those old women were her aunts. And they came out of that fiery revival, that fiery revival. They really experienced revival. And they sent a Bible, a copy of the Word of God that had been used in a special way in that revival to Marianne. She started having children. I think it was 1937, she had her first child. They named him after his father, Fred. Then she had her second child, named after herself, Marianne. Then she had her third child, Elizabeth. Then she had her fourth child. And she was so impacted by this teenage boy God had used in that revival of the Hebrides. 
She named him Donald. And she gave him that Bible, the Hebrides Revival Bible. He was born in 1946. He's now the 45th president of the United States. And that revival Bible is in the Oval Office. I'm saying to you, I don't know how, why, I don't know how it all comes together. But I, but I believe God is putting some things together to give us just a window, just a window. If he, if he could find some open people who know what the wind is for. Can this be the time the wind is open? Providentially, God has prepared the moment and we will become the people of prayer, pleading with God. This is a plea. Will thou not revive us again? Will you, will you, will you be a part of that? Will you? Wow, that's a very powerful and moving video. Not sure if you had seen that or not, but I just wanted to share it with you and uh, let each and every one of you have an opportunity to watch that. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, pray for our nation. We're going to pray for our leaders and we're going to ask God to bless them. We're going to ask God for their health um, and uh, we're going to ask God to give us wisdom, guidance and direction. Um, I really appreciate each and every one of you for showing up and we've had some major issues today, but it's okay. We're going to work through this. We're going to get through this. Almighty God, as we come before you, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you in spirit and truth. Dear God, you see our nation. You see the need we need to uh, have a change in our nation. God, you see the things, the people that are coming against it. You see the lies and you see the nefarious actions people are doing, the evil, the very evil that's come against our nation. I would ask God that you would move in a mighty way. I would ask God that you would look down right now upon President Biden, God, and uh, keep him safe. God, give him wisdom. God, if he's trying to do anything that's nefarious to our nation, God, we bind it right now in the name of Jesus and we loose the spirit of truth and light. God, we pray confusion into the camp of the enemy and we would ask, dear God, that you allow your revival to go forth. God, you see Donald Trump. We ask God that you allow truth to reign. We ask God that you take charge in this trial, God. We ask God that the way that you can make things happen, God, we are at the Nile River. God, we're at the Red Sea. God, we are right now needing a miracle. God, we need you to move in a mighty way and we give you the glory right now, God. We believe in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone have a good evening. Remember... Keep your powder dry.